Welcome to Cuvera's series on fire. In this video, we want to introduce you to our fire starter kit and showcase our support for HL7's newest standard for the exchange and retrieval of electronic health information, fire. If you are not familiar with HL7 fire, you may want to review our intro to HL7 fire video first. Cuvera has developed a fire starter kit that demonstrates how the Cuvera interface engine can be used to configure QIE as a fire server, receive a fire resource in response to a query, build custom fire resource requests to query a fire server, display the fire resource in either JSON or XML format, and convert the returned fire resource into an HL7 message. The fire starter kit includes a web-based form that puts a visual front end on the channel and simulates a healthcare IT system that is querying a fire server, receiving the fire resource, and then using QIE translates the fire response into an HL7 message. The demo form is composed of two sections, the fire query parameters and the fire query response. Let's take a closer look at the fire query parameter section. In this section, you can create your fire request URL, choose a fire server to query, enter your search parameter, and select your preferred response format. To assist you with building your FIRE request, Cuvera has added support for three common resources, patient, appointment, and immunization. The FIRE request URL can be built automatically by first selecting a FIRE resource from the drop-down list, then selecting your search parameter, and finally entering the string you want to query for. The search parameter and hints section are context-aware and will automatically update depending on the resource you select. Notice as we change resources from patient to appointment, the search parameter list changes, and as we select different search parameters, the hints section updates with helpful suggestions. If you click on one of the hint suggestions, the form automatically enters that string in the search parameter and completes the request URL. Lastly, select your desired format from the dropdown, either JSON or XML. It is important to note that these hints are only available using the built-in FIRE server. If you select a public FIRE server, for example, the public HAPPY server, we are unable to provide hints as that content is constantly changing. Once the FIRE request URL is created, clicking on the Submit FIRE Query button queries the FIRE server and displays both the FIRE response and the converted HL7 message. To help make the form more versatile, we made the FIRE request URL editable, allowing you to build your own custom search strings to query different parameters on various FIRE servers that you may be accessing. This allows you to use the form as a FIRE server test tool to query different FIRE servers and verify the responses returned. For example, we can query the Happy Public FIRE server for all patients who have a date of birth of June 6, 1991. After we have created our query string, we click Submit Fire Query and receive a fire bundle response with the patients whose date of birth match. In this case, we have one match, John Gill. The Fire Starter Kit comes with two test servers in the server drop-down list, and it is easy to add additional servers to query against. Inside the Fire Starter Kit zone, click on the System Variables section and select the Table Servers variable. Select Row insert row, and then after. In the name column, type in the name of the fire server, which will be displayed in the drop-down list. In the URL column, type in the fire server URL. Click Save. Then return to the demo form and reload the page. The new fire server will now be displayed in the drop-down list. The form is supported by two pre-configured channels. The first channel contains the configuration necessary to run the demo form and query a fire server, while the second channel demonstrates how QIE can function as a fire server. Each node within the channels contains detailed documentation to assist you in understanding how to use fire inside QIE. Let's take a closer look at the first channel. The source node in this channel is configured as an HTTP listener that is interacting with a web browser, which loads the fire demo form. The first condition node determines if the message is a FHIRE or HTML message and passes it on to the appropriate mapping node. 
When a fire query is submitted from the demo form, Mapping Node 3 will extract all of the parameters that were entered in the form and perform the action that has been requested when calling the fire server. This is broken down into two mapping functions. The first mapping function is responsible for extracting the URL parameters out of the fire request, and the second mapping function performs the web service call to the fire server. QAE calls the fire server using a built-in function, call rest web service, that handles all the call parameters. To handle any exceptions, we have configured the web service call in a try-catch so that if the fire server returns an error, we can return the message to the web page so the user can see the error response. Otherwise, if we don't catch the error, the fire request message would be sent to the QAE error queue and a generic 500 error would be sent to the demo form. Condition node 4 is verifying that we received a status code 200 or 404, indicating a valid fire response and passes the message to mapping node 5 for processing. If we did not receive a valid fire response, mapping node 14 posts the error response to the demo form for the user to view. Mapping node 5 handles the response from the fire server and extracts the content from the message. The first thing we check for is if the fire resource query was in either XML or JSON format. Then we extract the base64 encoded content from the message and use the built-in QIE function to base64 decode it. Once we have our content, we create a message output that is equal to the format of the fire response. The last thing we do in this mapping function is store the fire response in a message cache variable in XML format. This will allow us to convert the fire resource to an HL7 message. If the fire response is in JSON format, we will convert the JSON to XML using a built-in function called convert fire JSON to XML. QIE has many built-in native utilities for converting fire resources from JSON to XML and from XML to JSON. This allows for faster manipulation of fire resources and less code to accomplish your fire tasks. We have selected three fire resources, patient, appointment, and immunization, to demonstrate QIE's ability to create an HL7 message from a fire response. Condition node 6 checks to see if a patient resource was requested, and if so, mapping node 7 will convert it to an HL7 ADT message, while condition node 9 checks to see if an appointment resource was requested, and if so, mapping node 10 converts that to an HL7 SIU message, while condition node 11 checks to see if an immunization resource was requested, and if so, mapping node 12 converts that to an HL7 VXU message. If we take a closer look at mapping node 7, the creation of an HL7 ADT message, you will see that the first mapping function creates a new output HL7 message, and the second mapping function takes our existing XML fire response and inserts the data into the newly created HL7 message. Since a fire response can either be a single resource or a bundle of resources, we have configured the mapping function to traverse the entire XML document and return an array of all patient resources found. This allows us to loop through the array and create an HL7 ADT message for each patient found. We will build our HL7 message from a HL7 MSH template that is stored in the system variables section. The template contains the MSH segment and allows us to set specific fields using the built-in QIE set node function. Since this is an ADT message, we set fields 9.1 and 9.2 of the MSH segment to ADT and A08. To add another HL7 segment, in this case an EVN segment, we use another built-in function called add child node and the name of the segment you want to add. Once we have added the EVN segment, we will set the EVN event code and event date. Now we will add the PID segment to our HL7 message. Because HL7 message segments are often shared by multiple HL7 message types, ADT, SIU, etc., we have chosen to use published functions to handle the process of creating specific HL7 segments. A published function allows you to write your code once and then reuse it in multiple channels or mapping nodes. 
This has the added benefit that if you need to make a change to that function, you only need to make it once in the published functions section. When we examine the published function, you will see that we are using XPath to retrieve the value from the XML message, and then we are using HPath to set the value in the PID segment. For example, on line 16, we retrieve and set the patient ID, and on lines 20 and 21, we set the patient's first and last names. Going back to the channel, if you look in mapping nodes 10 and 12, you will see that we perform the same functions to create appointment and immunization HL7 messages. Once the HL7 message has been created, the message passes to mapping node 8. Since both the fire resource and the newly created HL7 message are being displayed on the demo form, mapping node 8 packages all of that information together and posts a response to the HTTP request, which is then displayed to the user. However, if we receive a fire resource that is not one of the three resources configured to create an HL7 message, mapping node 13 skips the process of creating an HL7 message and passes along the fire resource as is to mapping node 8. If you want to add support for additional fire resources, you can do so easily by adding additional condition nodes and inserting the fire resource you want to support. For example, if we wanted to add support for the medication resource, we would copy the condition node, paste it into the channel, change the value we are looking for to medication, and then wireframe it into the channel. Then we would add a mapping node to put in the logic that creates the HL7 medication message. The second channel in the Fire Starter Kit demonstrates how QAE can be configured to function as a fire server. The channel is configured to receive URL encoded fire requests and return the associated fire responses. While the fire specification allows for both URL and content encoded requests, in our demo we have focused on URL encoded requests since they are the most common. The source node in this channel is configured as an HTTP listener that is listening for a REST-based web service request. Once the request is received, the mapping node evaluates the fire request. Since fire requests can either be a query string, for example, a patient with a last name of Jones and first name Bernard, or a specific resource ID that has been provided to the user, QIE splits the URL into parts and automatically determines what kind of fire query to perform. Next, we evaluate the response format being requested by the user, either JSON or XML, and store that in a message cache variable. If our fire request is for a patient resource, we match the patient resource condition node and continue to mapping node 4. This mapping node will query our demo database for either a specific patient or for a list of patients matching the search criteria specified in the fire request. The first mapping function starts out with a helper function, which is used later on in the script. Since there are two possible fire requests, either a specific resource or a query string, the mapping function determines which query it needs to perform. If a resource ID exists, we query for the identified patient. If the query doesn't find the identified patient, we set the not found message cache value to true. Otherwise, if the patient was found, we call the helper function at the top of the script to extract the data out of the result and put it into a parameter map. Once the parameter map is created, we call the QIE evaluate template function and pass in the fire patient template that is stored as a system variable and the parameter map that contains the patient data. If you look at the template in the system variables section, you will see it is a patient fire resource that has embedded node takes that are used by the evaluate template call and replaced with the associated data values. For example, patient ID, medical record number, and the patient's first and last name. Upon completion of the evaluate template function, we have a fully populated patient fire resource that we will return to the user. If there is no resource ID, we will use the query string parameter values when querying the demo database. We start by creating a fire bundle to store all the patient entries in. To create the fire bundle wrapper, we again call the QIE evaluate template function 
and pass in the Fire Bundle template that is stored as a system variable. Once we've created the Fire Bundle wrapper, we initialize our entry array by calling the setJSON array function. Then, we loop through the result set returned by our patient query and add a patient resource to the entry array for each patient found. Upon completion of the for loop, we update the total count number in the fire bundle and return the fully populated fire bundle as our fire response. This process is repeated for each of the fire resources configured in the channel, practitioner, appointment, and immunization. If the request is for a resource the channel doesn't currently support, the message is passed to mapping node 14 where we set the not found message cache value to true. To post the fire resource or bundle back to the user, in condition node 5, we first check to see if the message cache variable not found has been set to true, in which case we continue to mapping node 6, which posts a fire operation outcome error response. Otherwise, we continue to mapping node 7, where we post the requested fire resource or bundle as our response. If the requested format was XML, we will use the built-in QIE function convert fire JSON to XML to convert the message to XML and post that as our response. If JSON was requested, we will post the response as is, since the message templates we use are in the JSON format already. Once the response has been posted, we discard the message. The Fire Starter Kit, along with other Fire videos, can be found on our website under the Resources section. Come be a part of the Fire conversation by joining the Cuvera community at cuvera.com. Happy interfacing!